you guys. Welcome to the first first impression video of 2023. I don't know about you. I've missed these videos, but I don't know where the big four has been. We haven't gotten a winter collection from hardly anybody. I think Vogue and Simplicity were the only two to give us winter collections and Simplicity has already dropped their uh, early spring collection, which is what we're going to be looking at today. But for the most part, it's been quiet over in the pattern release world, um, which is why I haven't put together one of these videos in a minute. But I am excited to take a look at these. And hopefully with the new year, the rest of the brands will catch up and we'll be getting their spring and early spring collections here shortly. I got to assume if winter hasn't gone live yet, it's not gonna, right? Don't you agree? Um, if you're new here, welcome. This is where we take a look at all the patterns in a new collection. Um, and we just kind of like gab about them. I give my opinions on fit, fabrication, kind of the overall design, and hope to hear from you guys in the comment section to see if you agree or disagree. I welcome it all. Um, all right, so without further ado, let's jump into this. We have this woman's dress, Simplicity 9704, flounce dress with V-shaped neckline and bust arts come in three lengths. This pattern features slight gathers at waist and gathered tier skirt. Dresses include lining, but only at the bodice and the yoke. I'll take it. Invisible zipper and side seam pockets. All right, let's take a look at this. So we have a dress with sort of like a, you know, a bust, under bust seam, a defined midriff, and then gathers here that open up into one, two, three, four, five tiers. That's interesting. And then it also has this sweetheart neckline, which is just stunning on her, especially beautiful, um, that kind of falls into this flutter sleeve. Now, the fl I'm looking over here at these drawings, and it does look like the sleeve becomes part of a ruffle for the bodice. That's really beautiful. Yeah. I mean, this is a really stunning dress. At first, when I was first kind of reading the description, I'm thinking, oh, another woven tiered dress. You know, these are a dime a dozen. We've got a whole bunch of these. I know I, I just looked through all my spring dresses um, to plan out my spring makes, and I'm like, I have so many of these. Um, but this one is quite different. At least the bodice is. And as you may or may not know, you can obviously take this bodice and swap it or swap out the skirt with any other skirt you have. So if you wanted to make it more fitted, if you wanted to do a like romper, you could do all of that. Um, you're really here buying the bodice design, I think. The ruffles are interesting, or the tiers, I should say, are interesting only in that they are not the same width. You know, there's like a little baby ones kind of in here. I don't know where this hits on the body. Might be worth considering something sheer here and here. Maybe even your midriff could be semi-sheer, shall we say? Or maybe some kind of like, I don't know, like a contrast. Now, I don't want to talk about color blocking per se, but like some kind of like even sheerness here I'm trying to think of something that's like, it's like fabric mixing, well, print mixing, obviously you could do that. That would be really easy and a lot of fun. But if you did like a, uh, this is a bad example, but hopefully it'll help you understand what I'm trying to say. If it was like a crepe back satin, for example, and for some, like for the flounce or for the sleeve flounce thing, the midriff and the smaller tiers, you did the satiny side. And then for everything else, you did the crepe side. Something like that. I think it would be fun to play with opacity with this one. Also to kind of freshen it up a little bit. Yeah, and it's that flounce becomes like, a, I don't know, like part of the back. Really cool. Okay, let's look at the back of the envelope. So they're recommending, I think across the board, a lot of these fabrics are going to repeat themselves. So I'm just going to tell you if I think anything um, is suitable that's not listed. Because a lot of these patterns you can wear like multiple months depending on or multiple seasons depending on where you live but because this is a early spring pattern they're going to recommend early spring fabrics 
Um, but they've got Chalet, Charmeuse, Cotton Lawn, Cotton Blends, Crepe de Chine, Double Georgette, Gauze, Poplin, Silky Types. Cotton Blends is in here. I was going to say Chambray would be pretty. Um, if you're going into the holidays, if you're th considering this for like a holiday dress, you could certainly do some of those um, light to mid-weight wovens, whether it be sparkly, glittery, shiny, whatever it is. Um, other than that, yeah, I do think it needs a little bit of drape, you know, for the flouncy sleeve. Otherwise, it'll just stand very far away from your body and kind of look, it won't fall, you know, close in on you. It'll stand away and kind of look like a, I don't know, like a shield or something. Um, but yeah, if it gathers well, I think it'll, it'll hold up well for that flounce. I'd love to see the flounce piece to see if it's cut actually as a flounce or if it's more of a ruffle. Um, but I couldn't do that without looking at the actual um, pattern instructions. But, okay, so in addition to that, you will need some lightweight fusible interfacing. No big deal. Um, notions, you need one zipper. Um, adjust to fit. Okay, cool. And then, because this is a women's pattern, I think the very next one is the, is the, um, uh, what's it called? Mrs. Version. Um, but this one is sizes 20W through 38W, which gives us a... Well, the bust and weight, well, the bust is 42 inches to 60 inches. Waist is 35 to 54 and a half. Hip might be a little bit negligible here because it is a bit of an A-line, but it does look like we've got two inches of ease in the bust. That makes sense for a fitted dress. Um, in the waist, 20 inches? That can't be right. All right, and in the waist, it says... That's 35 and 55, right? That can't be right. There's got to be a typo there. There's no way there's 20 inches of ease in this waist. Just literally no way. I'd be surprised if there's five inches of ease in this waist. That's odd. And then for the hip, they're saying 20 inches of ease in the hip. I don't think that's right either. That's bizarre. Something uh, Something's not right about that. I don't know if it is printed like that on the tissue paper or if they just got the pattern backs mixed up online I'm not sure um, but one thing I did wanted to point out especially for those of you that are in the women's category and the women's sizing specifically I just had a fast fit consultation today with a woman who is more curvy and we're talking about waist seam placement it is so important and for her I think that they might have missed the mark on her waist by a little teeny tiny bit. Can you see where this like ruffle is happening or this fold? I think that's where her waist seam actually is, right in here somewhere. They're very close, but I think if they were to raise it by this, I don't know, half, three quarters of an inch, um, it would have been absolutely perfection in terms of fit. But yeah, that's all I really see on this one. I love the front so much. This sweetheart just looks fantastic. You can kind of see a little, it's hard to zoom in on these simplicity ones. This is as far as I can go. But you can kind of see an eensy teensy little bit how raising that up a little bit would help just ever so slightly. But most people are not going to see that little difference. It's just me and my highly critical eye whenever I sit down to do these videos. But, um, but yeah, double check the finished garment measurements for sure before you head off and make this. All right. Other than that, I think we just have line drawings. There is a pocket. Again, if you're new to these videos, <laughs> that you will, there is a side seam pocket. If you know me at all, then you know that I am going to check and see if the um, pocket pattern is a teardrop pocket or if it's one that's anchored into the waist. If it is a teardrop pocket, I will 100% of the time transfer it and, and redo it to make it a um, waist seam pocket. I have a video on the channel about how to do that. I think you can probably just search pocket and it'll come up. Um, but again, I don't know what the pocket shape looks like without seeing the actual pattern envelope itself or like the pattern instructions. But yeah, she's really pretty. Let's see. Um, I think, like I said, the next one is... That's not true. Wait, here it is. Isn't that it? Yeah, that's the same one. Okay, they just didn't put them in the same order. So here is the exact same dress in the Mrs. category. 
Um, you can see they put hers in a solid. And I want to say that the waist on hers is a little bit long too. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. So double check that. I always have to check length on my patterns because I am so short waisted. I usually end up taking out like an inch or two. Um, so if you're not doing that, it's a really good habit to get into. It's really easy to falter once you get there, once you figure out how much you need to remove. Um, but yeah, they did a lot of like bright pastel Easter colors on the illustrations. This also feels like a little bit more of like a silky tight polyester fabric. And if you can remember what the one looked like on the woman sizing, it was a little bit stiffer and stood away from her body a little bit more, whereas this one is completely falling in. Um, it's just more drape to the fabric. But yeah, there's the back. Yeah, it is a little bit long, right? It should be right about here. So. And that also is the version with no tiered ruffle at all. So this is all going to be the same. Let's, I just want to check the um, waist and hip finished garment measurements. 22 to 38. That <laughs> That is what, 10, 16 inches? That's not right either. And then the hip, they have it at 31 to 43, so like 12-ish. That might be right, but even that I feel like something, something's up here. So weird. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the finished garment measurements there. Hmm, okay. Um, all right, so that's the same. We looked at all the photos. Great. This is a Mrs. Empire dress. V-neck dress comes in above mid-knee to mid-calf lengths and has sleeve variations and side pockets. View A features a crochet trim on V-neck line. That's fun. And long sleeves gathered to self-bias binding edges. View B has ruffled hem, long sleeves with ruffles at ends and elastic at wrists. View C is tiered dress with short sleeves and gathered caps. Okay. So we have got a deep V, right? This is going a little bit below her bust apex. So if you're very cleavage-y, um, just keep that in mind. You will be showing a lot of yourself. <laughs> um, and it does have this, what they're calling an empire seam here. It's also like the under bust. Then your first here starts at high hip. That's the main difference between the last one and this one. Um, that version, the first tier started at the waist. So this is going to be a lot more roomy, a lot more free flowing, a lot more like festival vibes. Um, just really easy to throw on. And I imagine super comfortable, but in my opinion, it stays really feminine and flattering because it is so well fitted just through this bodice area. Okay. So then you have the option of this tier here. And then also this long one that makes it like ankle length which is C. Yep. B is this tier. And then like a little baby one underneath, which I'm assuming is like midi length maybe. And then view A stops right here. No, not true. View A is somewhere in here because A doesn't have this. A just drops down. Um, but yeah, A also has the option for the trim detail, which really allows you to kind of get creative and make your garments like super personal, especially if you're doing something like on an embroidery sewing machine or like hand embroidering, hand beading, any of that kind of stuff. You can really make a statement with this. But then we have our three sleeves, as they mentioned, we've got the long sleeve with the wrist um, elastic. This one has a bit of a ruffle at the wrist. And then this one is what she's wearing, the short sleeve with a little puffy doodad there and then elastic at the bicep. Pretty, right? I can just imagine throwing this on and just, you know, staying cool as a cucumber all spring, even into the some of the summer months, depending on where you live, you could easily get away with this. Um, and, you know, double check the arm side, but you might even be able to make this sleeveless, you know, just make sure the arm side isn't too low and you could have a really pretty sleeveless dress. Okay, so here's the back. Now remember, this is a drop waist. However, oh, I see. It looks like the front, this thing, 
this empire waist seam drops down and then it becomes your back waist. So you would need to pay attention to your like upper neck, like this measurement from your top of your neck to your back waist. You would need to pay attention to that. Um, again, this does feel a little bit long. So you could shorten this a little bit and maybe it would fit at her proper waist. But you know, again, I'm not sure that because it's not the same in the front, I'm not sure to the eye it would look disproportionate. Um, you might get away with it being low. But if you're short-waisted like me, you definitely don't want this to be at your high hip. Um, you want this seam to be above your butt crack. <laughs> Can I say that on the internet? Oh, gosh. Um, that would be the proper proportion. And then from here, this should be around your knee, so on and so forth. All right, here's the back envelope. Poplin, gauze, cotton blends, linen. Yeah, they're definitely going for something a little more structured here. We still need a little bit of drape for the gathers, um, but definitely more structured. They want this one to stand away from your body a little bit more. If you get something that's drapey, like a chalet or a silky type or anything like that, it's just going to like fall in really close to your body. Not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not the intent of the designer. Um, you could definitely use those fabrics. Just know that it's going to like hang closer to your body. Um, going the other way into more of like a mid-weight, I'm thinking like corduroy, like lightweight versions of corduroy denim. They did say cotton blends, which that category is so broad. Like <laughs> I wish they would expound on that a little bit, but um some of those fall fabrics, I think you might be able to get away with them. Certainly like some um, like twill blends. So like a rayon twill, you know, some, I think you could do some of that for sure. Rayon poplin, absolutely. So you could definitely do something a little bit weightier. Just make sure that it still kind of forms into a gather nicely. Otherwise, you're just going to have a headache trying to get all those gathers into the tiers. Okay, so we also have crochet trim for A, whether you're doing that yourself or buying it. Um, elastic, elastic, and bias tape. Okay, so this is sizes 8 to 26. So no women's category here, but remember the last Mrs. Dress stopped at 20. So we do have three additional sizes on this one. Um, and it looks like that's a bust. Well, really, yeah, I'm going to say the bust is really the only thing that matters here. 31 and a half up to 48 body chart measurement finished. They're giving five inches of ease. So you, there is some wiggle room there. Um, I might even, I don't know, size down. I would look at it using my fast fit worksheet to see somewhere between the three and five inch uh, ease. I think you'd be good. Anything tighter than that, it's just going to i don't, probably feel more funny than it looks. Anything larger than that, you'd just be drowning. But another cute one. Very cute. Again with the pockets. Teardrop. No thank you. But you can stick them right into this waist seam and you'd be great. Um, even in the front, you can alter the pattern piece to have this same angle. So the pocket actually comes up through here. And down. It gives you nice, really big pockets too. Okay. What is next? We have, oh, a Mimi G pattern. Okay. Not surprisingly, curves are at the forefront. <laughs> Mimi loves her curves, and that's what we love about her patterns, right? This is a knit dress in two lengths. Easy to sew, slim fit dress. Comes in two lengths and features square shaped neckline and wrist or elbow length sleeves. So, wow, she made a tube dress. Um, wow, yeah, there's really not much to say about this. I do adore this neckline. I had some t-shirts probably when I was in my 20s, I guess, that had this neckline so, so, so flattering. Um, kind of minimizes the shoulder width, especially if you're smaller busted, kind of emphasizes the smaller bust. But yeah, then you have an elbow length sleeve and a 
full length sleeve, knee length, or mid calf. Yeah, you guys, this is like three pattern pieces. So stretchy knits, such as rib knits, of course. Jersey, yep. Two-way stretch lycra or spandex blends and stretch velvet. She always does such a good job with her suggested fabrics. Um, yeah, any of those would be really great. Uh, I don't know if they, I'm sure they still have it. Stylemaker Fabrics has a like mid-weight cotton jersey that would be exceptional for this in the spring and summer. But rib knit, form-fitting rib knit dresses are all the rage right now. Everybody's wearing them, putting like leather jackets over them. Super, super cute. Um, this one goes up to size 26. Um, it is a knit dress, so I'm assuming there's going to be either zero ease or negative ease almost throughout. Um, so the bust on this one goes from 31 and a half to 48. We have zero ease in the bust. That makes sense. Four inches of ease in the waist? Mimi, I don't think so. Right? We're not seeing four inches of ease right here. No. So not quite sure what that is about. And then for the hip, they're saying three and a half inches of ease. Hmm. I think all of those should have zero to negative. That's my personal opinion. If you want it to fit like Mimi's does. If you want it to be a little bit more loose fitting, these should be fine. But... I mean, four inches of ease is a lot. It's definitely noticeable. So even though it's a simple dress, um, be sure to pay attention to fit. And, uh, you know, you can get something that looks really exceptional. But yeah, this neckline is genuinely stunning. Love that. Subtle detail, but man, it really does make a difference. Okay, now we're on to... Skirts, okay. We have a Mrs. Skirt. Button front skirts feature yokes and have length and hem variation. Skirts include front slant pockets or flat pockets with button closure. Um, okay. All right. So you've got this like large yoke, for lack of a better term. Um, the slant pockets have this little like flap with a button. Then they're like top stitched and then lots of buttons going on the front and then a point or I don't know, asymmetrical, but shorter on the sides and longer in the front and back. I don't know. This feels like it's trying to be vintage in a way, but it's also trying to be like prairie. Vintage prairie. Is that a thing? I don't think so. Um, you do have this version that has a shorter or like a narrower yoke and no flaps, so just simpler kind of all around. And then this version that is just knee length. I, I, not really my style, I don't think. Let's see if we get some other picks. No. Oh, here's one. Hmm. Yeah, that's not really helping. We get a back view. Here's straight on. Do I like that more? A little bit. I like that a little bit more. Are they trying to make it like a shirt tail hem? Maybe that's what's throwing me off. I kind of don't mind this. The defined, really high-waisted, fitted, even though it comes to a point. I kind of don't mind that. Maybe if they would have made up the other version that just... Um, Stops at the knee, it would have been better. Oops, how did I do that? Magic. Uh, where were we? From the back, yeah. Um, nope. Maybe that version would speak to me more. I don't know, Am I? but I might not be a skirt person. <laughs> I don't know. I think I tried to get into skirts last year and it never really took off. Um, all right, so they are recommending Light to mid-weight wovens with little to no drape at all. Um, so we've got broadcloth, chambray, cotton blends, denim, linen blends, micro suede, stretch, uh, stretch wovens. You could make this out of any fabric, any season, really. 
You could do the suede and the leathers and the corduroys and all of that in the fall and winter. Um, you could do your lightweight fabrics in the spring. Um, I don't know that I would do like a, like a chalet per se, but certainly like a lightweight chambray or cotton blend or something like that would work. 8 to 26 on the size range here. That means the waist, which is really the fitted, most fitted part, is a size, or I'm sorry, it's 24 to 30, I'm sorry, what am I saying? 24 to 41 and a half inches with one inch of ease in the waist. Like, right? So how can this pattern have one inch of ease in the waist and Mimi's like very close fitting tube dress has three or four? Like that, that doesn't make sense. Um, so yeah, one inch in the waist and then the hip looks like there is almost 10, um, which is fair for a A-line skirt. All right. And again, here are our line drawings. This might be, you know, it might be the fabric. I'm, I'm picturing this in a true denim with all the top stitching. Can you see that a little bit better? I see it more as a fall thing. I see, I'm seeing corduroy, suede, even like a chino, I think would be better like lean into the safari of it all. <laughs> um, I think trying to make this into a spring skirt with this like lightweight shirting is what's confusing me. So yeah, rethink the fabric choice and I think you could have a really cute skirt. All right, this is one of my favorite types of patterns. It is the wardrobe pattern where you can literally make an entire wardrobe in one pattern. You get a knit top, a cardigan, and a skirt. Knit top, cardigan, and a skirt. And it looks like you get two versions of the cardigan as well. Comfortable and stylish knit top, cardigan, and skirt. Outfit is perfect for any occasion. Cardigan comes in two lengths. Knit top is sleeveless, and skirt includes a self-tie belt. So this is a 100% knit outfit. Talk about comfort. Talk about wearable pajamas. If you're traveling... You know, get one of those that doesn't wrinkle or whatever. Those knits that just magically don't wrinkle. Come on. All right. It looks like they might have used a rib knit for the top and this cardigan. And then some other kind of mid-weight knit for the skirt. This cardigan is swallowing her whole. Now, I'm looking at this and it does appear to be a drop shoulder. But that is... That's a lot of drop shoulder for someone who at, is as, I mean, petite and small as she is. Um, I don't, it's hard to tell because it's a cardigan if it's too big. But I mean, look at this arm size. This arm size is like down past her bust apex. So definitely some tweaks to the cardigan for sure. At least double checking and these, the arm size for sure. Um, I would bring this up by two or three inches. This needs to come up like four inches. Um, cause it could be really, really chic if the fit were great. I love that the skirt and the cardigan are the same length. I think that really adds to the chicness of it all. I'm getting like Michelle Obama vibes from this, but yeah, the fit on that cardigan has got to be worked on. So there's your basic tank, not much to it. Here's the shorter skirt with, or, or all the skirts one length. I'm not sure, but that has the self tie. Here's the cardigan and then the shorter version of the cardigan. Okay, good. So here is the top and the skirt together. You can see the arm side on the top looks fine. They did a rib on rib here. I don't know if the skirt is supposed to sit at the natural waist or not. If it is, this needs to come up a lot more. If not, this looks fine. And she also, this model doesn't have, you know, a very curvy figure at all. She's pretty much a ruler straight up and down. Um, so imagine those of us with a bust or a hip, this could really be like wham, bam, super, super hot looking, even though it's just like two knit garments. Oh, I did it again. How did I do that? I don't know how I keep doing that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here she is. Come back. So this one. 
So they are both rib knits. Okay, so they must have just used mid-weight ribs on both of them. Gosh, it really could not be more comfortable. Yeah, I love this winter white in the spring as well. But yeah, I mean, the actually the arm side on the tank top could even be taken down a little bit. Somewhere, somewhere in the middle between the cardigan and the tank top. Yeah, even cutting this out some would be helpful in terms of just you know feminizing it a little bit. But come on, that's that looks like it's her dad's like blazer or something. You know what I mean? Like that is just that's too much. Okay. So, knits for sure, right? They are saying A, C, and D, which is the tops and the the top and the cardigans, stretch knits only, such as interlock, jacquard, jersey, ity, modal, and bamboo. Ironic that they didn't put rib knit in there because that's what they used. Um, modal bamboo, yeah, modal bamboo. That's all gonna be really drapey. Same with ity. Yeah, all of those would look really pretty in the cardigan for sure. The tank top, I might stick with something a little less drapey. That's just my personal preference. Um, and then for the skirt, you can go into heavier weight stuff like Double Knit, Ponty, and Terry. Yeah. Oh, B, C, and D. Okay, so the cardigan you can do out of any of those. I totally agree. The skirt out of the heavier weight ones. The top out of lighter weight ones. Or do like they did and pick a mid-weight and do it top to bottom. Cool. Okay, 4 to 20 on the size range here. Again, I'm expecting zero to negative ease on the top and skirt at least. So that's a bust of 29 and a half inches to 42. And good, one an inch of negative ease in the bust. Excellent. The waist for the skirt is different than the waist for the top. Love that. And let me mute this. Perfect. And the hip is 31 and a half to 44 and a half. I'm sorry, 44 on the skirt. And then the um, finished is zero ease. No, just kidding. Two and a half inches of ease at the hip, which might reflect what we see on her. Little bit of wiggle room there. You could definitely take an inch out, which is just really removing um, a quarter of an inch from the side seams. It adds up to one inch all the way around. Um, and get a little bit more of a fitted look there or leave it as it is. But yeah, overall, fun idea. And like I said, got to be comfortable. Perfect. Those are our line drawings. I don't see anything that we missed. Good. All right, next up we have, okay, good. The same outfit in the women's category. Excellent. Let's see how this cardigan looks on her. Um, well, it's hard to tell because maybe it just looks better because it's fully opened here. Or maybe they just made it her size and the other girls is just too big. Um, this also is sitting at her natural waist. So this is a lot higher on her than the other girl. So I'm going to assume that it's supposed to sit at your natural waist and the, the Mrs. model, it was too low on her. So flattering. I love that these match on this one. Such an interesting, I love when they make multiple versions because we can really see some of these differences, right? Like how matching the cardigan to the skirt versus matching the skirt to the top can change the outfit. Yeah, she looks great. I want to see the back of her cardigan. Okay, here is her tank top. I think the neckline might have gotten stretched out a little bit while they were making this bias. There is some kind of pulling here to accommodate for her full bust, but really negligible stuff. And honestly, probably so specific to her. Okay, so we are not getting any pictures of the back of that cardigan. Dang. Also, I just realized this too. Remember how I commented on how the cardigan was the same length as the skirt on the Mrs. version? 
because they have pulled this up higher, now they are not the same length. So if you liked that about the misses, but you like that this sits at the natural waist, you got to do some math and chop some of this cardigan down. But yeah, we're not going to get a picture of the back of the cardigan on her, which is sad. Um, all of this is the same. We should still have the same ease rules. This one actually has two inches of negative ease in the bust. That could be part of the reason why you're getting that pulling at her shoulder. It's like a combination of that plus the amount of stretch that's in the fabric they chose. Like those two things together kind of play off of each other to determine the fit in the bust. Um, and then for the hip of the skirt, B hip 46. So two and a half inches of ease here. Same. Okay, cool. Good. I gotta say, I like this model's outfit better than the, than the misses. Something, I don't know. It just feels chicer to me to have the cardigan in the skirt matching versus the cardigan in the top. Right? Okay, this is everyone's favorite part of these videos where I try and bumble my way through a vintage pattern. I know, I don't know what half of these words are going to mean. You guys do a really, the vintage girlies out there, you guys do a wonderful job of educating all of us in the comment section. So please continue to do that because there's a lot of stuff where I'm like, what does that mean? Never even really sewn a vintage pattern, I don't think. I don't know anything about like vintage design, vintage, I don't know. Like I know what a dicky is and I'm happy that's how far I've gotten. Okay, so this one says vintage skirt, blouse, and jacket. Trim sleeve, the trim sleeveless blouse. Like already, what does trim sleeveless mean? Like slim fit? Maybe that's what it means. Blouse has soft pleats at front neck edge. One button fastens neck band above front opening. So kind of like a keyhole. The full skirt is softly pleated from side to, oh gosh, softly pleated from side front to side back waistline, giving a rounded hip line effect. Okay, I can see what that means, how it's like poofier on the sides. The short jacket features a shawl collar cut in one with the front. So a grown on shawl collar, push up kimono sleeves are three quarter length. Okay. That one wasn't so bad. <laughs> so yeah, we definitely have like a keyhole with a button closure, some waist darts, center front seam. Does the jacket not cover your boobs? That's interesting. This is the grown on shawl collar they mentioned. It is like the babyest of all shawl collars I've ever seen, right? Um, it is kind of cool that your little button peeks through though. Those are, I guess, the little details about vintage patterns that people love so much. But you also have this shoulder dart, this pretty significant one. That is what is allowing the room for the bust because we don't have a bust dart coming this way. Certainly nothing coming up this way. So this is what is giving us the room for our bust. Top uh, seam for the shoulder because it's kind of like a, well, not kind of, it is a dolman design. And then they've purchased these belts, but this is the pleating detail that they were saying makes it look like, like it gives you faux hips. I got plenty of hips already. I'm not sure I need to add to them. Here is the pattern back. So cotton, linen, rayon, and silk for sure. Also in lengthwise stripe fabrics. So I think that that would mean they are going to give you special instruction on how to cut these, I'm assuming. Um, A and D, which is the jacket, also in wool types. And... D, the skirt in velveteen, or is that the jacket? Hold on. Oh, it doesn't really say, does it? Hold on. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, okay, D is the jacket. Look at those line drawings. Huh. Look at, oh, it separates. I don't know why I thought it was a dress. Did I think it was a dress? No, I don't know. I think I forgot. But it's three separate pieces. Anyways, um, okay, so back to this. D is the jacket. So top and jacket. No, A has got to be the skirt. I'm getting so confused. You guys can make other tales of this. Um, okay, notions, two snaps, one hook and eye, 
double fold bias tape, hem tape, zipper, button, more buttons, shoulder pads, and bias tape. Boy, they did not skimp out on notions back in the day. Um, size 6 to 24, I think probably reflective of the sizing from back then. And then the bust is, they say it has 6 inches of ease. It's hard to tell when there's just illustrations. You know, it's really hard to tell what's going on there. But um, And then the waist, I think, for the skirt probably matters. 25, 23, yeah, so a couple of inches of ease there. Yeah, that all seems right. And then again, here are the line drawings. This is really beautiful. They do have that lapped zipper here on the side. Very vintagey detail. Okay. And then we have this skirt, which I feel like I have in my stash from like the early... 2010s, right? Doesn't it look like that? Maybe it's the color. Pleated skirt in three lengths comes with contoured waistband and side seam pockets. Skirt A has belt set in side seams. Skirt C has a pleated self tie. Okay. Yeah, it's like the ballet flats and then the high waisted skirt with the button down. It's giving me like we're going right back to 2010. Um, okay, so this is the C, C, A. I think this is the version where it's a self-tie, but is it sewn into the side seams? Is that what they meant? Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Just a whole bunch of box pleats and a waistband. This is the one with the belt set in the side seams. I didn't really know what that meant. And this is the self tie. Does that go all the way around? No. Okay. So it looks like all the belts are sewn into the side seam of the of the waistband. And then you can see here we've got the four pleats, center back seam with a invisible zipper. All right. So cotton blend, satin, fail, and jacquard. Okay. So they went with mid, mid weight no drape wovens. There are a lot more options in that category than just this. Um, if you start looking again into the suede and the leathers and the corduroys, um, you can even go into like wools and suiting and things like that if you want to like think about fall or even winter. Um, it does look like there's a few different lengths too, so you could really play up like a mini version with tights. How cute would that be? depending on how much more of your winter is left. All right, invisible zipper. Oh, horse hair braid, that's fun. So that's what's giving that like really dramatic wavy bottom is the horse hair, which makes me think that you could go even a little bit lighter weight than what they're suggesting. Again, not into like chalet territory, but definitely into like, some of the lighter weight cotton blends and that horsehair braid is going to give you the volume that you need at the hem. Um, and then a decorative buckle for, oh, so that belt on a doesn't come undone. I don't think, well, I guess neither does the one for C you tie it once and then you just get in and out of it from the zipper. So that's kind of fun. All right, and then waist is, it comes in sizes 4 to 22. That's a waist of 22 to 37 inches. The hip is beyond negligible. Um, so the finished garment measurements of the waist, they give you one and a half inches of ease there. Pretty close fitting. Perfect. And then here are, oh my goodness, can you guys hear that thunder? Um, big storm rolling in tonight. But anyways, um, there are line drawings. Yeah. I mean, she's pretty basic, right? You probably have, if you've been sewing for 15 years, you probably have something like this in your stash from back in the day. But if you're new to sewing, this is something really fun to pick up. It's really easy to sew. You can probably sew it in an afternoon. Um, 
and you get really good at pleats. Here is the women's version. They have paired hers with like a bodysuit type top and did the longer length with no belt. So this is definitely giving me like, and look how high her waist is. I just want to point that out again. Um, Cause so many people are like, there's no way my waist is that high. There's no way my waist is that close to my boobs. Yes, it is. <laughs> I promise. Um, yeah, I'm getting like, well, first of all, let me say, I do like that the pleats don't come together in the center front. See how there's a space here? That I think is a lot more flattering for those of us that have a belly protrusion. I like that a lot. It's just flatter right there and no, no bulk, no extra anything. Just keeping it as slim looking as possible. This like off the shoulder, like um, ballerina um, leotard type of top with this fuller satiny skirt is reminding me maybe again of those 2010s times when we wore stuff like this. I don't know. I can't remember if it's like a movie that I'm thinking of or someone. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's like a costume that's like coming to mind, but I just can't remember. But certainly if this skirt were even in black and it was like a black jersey top and then a black satiny skirt, that would be, you know, really beautiful for the holidays or a party. Or if you were doing like something for Valentine's Day and this were pink and this were red, you know, you could do a lot of fun stuff with the color blocking of your top if you wanted to do something a little bit more flirty and sexy like this versus the other one with the button down that was a little bit more like conservative. All right, so here are the illustrations. Here's the back on her. It looks great. Exceptional. I want to know where they got that top. Am I right? Should be the same ease. Let's see, 36, 35. So actually only one inch of ease. I don't know. That feels a little snug to me. I might want a little bit more just so I can eat <laughs> comfortably. Um, but this goes from a waist of 35 to 54 and a half. Great. So, so far three women's options, maybe more. One day we'll get to the point where every single design has two patterns. Fitted tops feature darted necklines and invisible back zipper. Long or short gathered sleeves create a slouchy effect. Tops A and D have an open back. It's a mullet shirt. Okay. So this is, oh shoot, what's that indie pattern with the same, oh gosh, are you guys screaming at your screens? Leave it in the comments if you know what I'm talking about, where it has the same funnel neckline, same little pleating details here. It's one of the like more expensive indie pattern companies, but then it has these um, fisheye darts here on the side. And then a center front seam. This is the slouchy sleeve. It's a beautiful photo of the sleeve uh, pleats. Very slouchy. Then you have a short sleeve version. Oh, this version that has this little scallop detail neckline. That's really fun. And then that neckline with a shorter sleeve too. Okay, let's see what this backless version looks like. Or sorry, open back. Come on, give us the open back. Thank you. Okay, not nearly as dramatic as I thought. At all. <laughs> I don't know what I was picturing. Um, yeah, this is interesting. I don't, I don't not like it. I do like it very much. I'm having a hard time picturing where I'm wearing this. And outside of styling it with jeans, what are you wearing it with? You know, if it's not jeans or some kind of slim trouser, like what's, like how else can we style this? I don't know that you can put anything over top of it really, unless it was super full. Tucking it in could be problematic because it is so like kind of flary. All right, but yeah, it's open back, but you could definitely still wear a bra and you just have to get this little button closed, which for some people would be difficult, you know, flexibility wise in the shoulders. So, <clears throat> okay. Oh, D does have a bow instead of a button. So you could do that. All right. Chambray, cottons, crepe, rayons, 
ponty knit and sateen. Huh. That makes me feel like, because isn't the other, the indie version I'm thinking of, isn't that a knitted, that's a knit top, right? Like it's a sweater. Maybe because it's in a woven, that's what's, I don't know, something, uh, I'd have to do some research and look up like this funnel neck kind of outfit like how, how people are wearing it. I'm thinking like my inclination is to do like a high waisted wide leg trouser, but I just don't know if you can tuck it in. I guess so. If you can tuck in button downs, you can certainly tuck this in. Maybe I'm overthinking it, which if you know me. <laughs> okay. So we've got invisible zipper, a button zipper, zipper for notions. This is size six to 24. Um, I want to say the waist is probably the smallest part here. What are they giving us finished garment wise, bust and waist? So yeah, four inches of ease in the waist, uh, two and a half in the bust. And even though the waist does have that ease, there are so many seams, so many seams for you to help nip and tuck that in to get the exact fit you want. I think it could be really cool. I think it could be really cool. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are our line drawings. Yeah, that one's just so kind of like extra modern that I just have a hard time like cre creatively like getting myself there. Okay, so this is a woman's shirt, relaxed fit, button front shirt in two lengths. They're calling this easy. They're out of their minds. Button front with a collar in a silky? No. No. I don't know who you think you're fooling. Well, I know who you think you're fooling, but you're not fooling me. I feel bad for all those poor beginner sewists out there who are just learning to sew. And they're like, oh, look, easy to sew. Lies. Okay, sorry, just went off on a tangent there. Okay, relaxed fit, button front shirt in two links features yoke, collar, and buttoned cuffs. Come on. Do you use A and C have side seam pockets? What? Is it a dress, a shirt dress? I mean, even this pocket is hard. I'm mad. I'm mad. Um, a and C, yeah, they're longer, so I guess they're like little shirt dresses, which, yeah, I mean, look how long her top is already, like, low hip length, so you wouldn't need to add much more length to make it a cute little mini dress. Is the only difference the length? Oh, there's the yoke with the little traditional pleat there, drop shoulder pleats into the sleeve, button cuff. I'm pretty sure that's a collar with a collar stand. I just can't believe they're calling this easy. Yeah, I think these are all the same, just different lengths. Oh, and then the little pockets, which these have to be teardrop pockets, meaning I just won't use them. I just sew that right on shut. Um... Okay, so silk types, crepe, rayon, sateen, lightweight denim, flannels? Yeah, I mean, why not? Spring flannel, that makes sense. And cottons, some interfacing and buttons. This is a size 20 to 38. It's pretty roomy all around. I mean, the bust has 10 inches of ease in it, so... You don't even have to worry about fit too, too much. I would worry about the shoulders more than anything. I would start there and then let everything else kind of fall into place. But it does look like everything is the same. Although, are these sleeves different? Okay, so we've got one little difference here in the sleeve and that's it. So length variations and sleeve variations and that's it. Okay. There we go. Oh, another interesting point is this one only has four buttons and then it's open from here. They all are like that. 
Okay, well, it looks different on her. It comes down to at least her belly button. Here, it looks like a lot of you is going to be exposed. Did she make B? What is she wearing? Yeah, she's in B. And B is this one. Okay. Yeah, something's not adding up here. Like, that does not look like that. But maybe it does. Okay, I don't know. All right, then we have the um, Mrs. version of that same shirt. So you can see what I was talking about before, how it's open. Like, from the belly button down, it is open. Um... They put this one in white, which is obviously giving off, like, lab coat vibes. I get where they're going, like, a twist on a traditional button-down, but when it's this long, it genuinely just looks like a lab coat. Um, certainly not any easier to sew. We just put her in a legging and the top, and that's it. Yeah. Again, got to be comfortable. There's the back on her. The shoulders do look really nice. Can you see the difference between this shoulder and then the one on the cardigan from before? Like, like petite, small people can wear drop shoulders. It just has to be proportionate to their figure. And that other one was just way too big. Like the shoulder line, the shoulder length was way, way, way too long. Okay, and then this should all be the same. And yeah, half inch difference on the busties, but yeah, pretty roomy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I would go through the trouble of making this. It's not unique or different enough for me to spend all this time and energy on it. The concept, I guess, is cool enough, but yeah, I don't know. It's just a little bit, like, too basic. I don't know. All right, this is not that basic. It's a basic with a twist, which is totally my vibe. That's the thing about the previous top dress. It's basic with a twist, but just not enough twist. Like, they took a quarter turn, and I need to go, like, half or more. <laughs> okay, tops feature a front knot detail with pleats at shoulder. Tops include sleeve variations and invisible back zipper. How fun is this? So you have like a handkerchief neckline or like a cowl neckline because of these pleats. And then also the little twisty thingamajig. Beautiful. Really pretty. And I'm guessing these are all lightweight wovens. Her jeans are a little bit big, but I guess that's what the kids are wearing these days. Um, okay, there's like a silkier version. Some little print. I kind of want it as a t-shirt. Is that too much to ask? Let's see. Shally, charmeuse, cotton lawn, crepe, crepe de chine, double georgette, and silky type. So yeah, they're doing all lightweight drapey. Um, you probably could get away with a shirting. Just know that if you make this version and then also like your front, no matter which version you make, um, the less drape your fabric has, the more like poofy all those things are going to be, all those details. Whereas in the drapier fabric, they kind of just like fall. These are going to make them like stand out a little bit more. It's like a dry paper towel versus a wet paper towel. <laughs> Let me know if that analogy helps. Okay, so your invisible zipper. I don't know that it needs to be 22 inches. Does it go all the way to the bottom? It doesn't need to. I think you could probably get away with stopping it right here. So a good 16 inches maybe, depending on how long you are. Also, if this is supposed to be at her waist... Her waist is way up here. I didn't notice that before. Yeah. Maybe a little bit long in the waist. Because this, I think, is hitting, like, 
where her jeans, like it's like a mid rise. Hmm. Okay. Hold on. Let me look at the line drawings and I'll be able to better assess. Yeah. Maybe it is a little bit dropped. Hmm. Okay. Um, eight to 26 on the size range. That is a waist of 24 to 41 and a half, four inches of ease in the waist, and then three and a half in the bust. So, yeah, I guess it is a little bit, here's that seam here. Yeah, it's hard to tell what the intention is. Again, you'd have to look at your pattern pieces. It'll say like, you know, where the waistline is marked. If that is somewhere in this bodice piece, like up here somewhere, that makes sense. If they try and tell us that this is it, then yeah, you gotta shorten your waist. But yeah, I could see this out of so many cool, like picture, um, like bandana fabric, whatever that print is called, like lean in to this thing, <laughs> you know, like, you want it to look like a bandana? Okay, I'll give you a bandana. Which is why I think like a lightweight cotton could be so cool. I don't know. I don't see this as a blouse. I see this more as like a, like way more casual. I guess this sleeve though is very fancy. It's cool though. I like it. Here we go. Line drawings, yeah, I think we got it all. Still does look a little bit long-waisted, doesn't it? Does it say here? No, no, okay. So now we have, speaking of rain, a jacket in two lengths, which one of them I think they put in like waterproof material. So this is designed for the American Sewing Guild. So anytime you purchase one of these, I have this on here, a portion of the proceeds go to ASG. So if you want to support them and then get something for your support, this is a good way to do it. Um, hooded parka and two links features side seam, park, uh, side seam pockets, snaps or button closure and concealed zipper. View A has faux pocket flaps. These might all be water repellent because look, her boots are like rain boots. So yeah, they made this as traditional as it comes in terms of these like rain parkas, right? Like I could probably find one of these at Goodwill today, but truly from like the eighties. Um, or you could do like a really fun print or something like super shiny. I do like that the hood has a very small opening because when it's raining, it's usually windy. And the problem that I have with um, the two raincoats that I've made so far is that if they don't have like a toggle here or like a drawstring here, the wind just blows the thing right off my head anyways. And then my hair gets wet. So what's the point of having a hood? I don't want to hold it there the whole time. So. But yeah, this is about as traditional as it gets. It's a raglan sleeve. They did mention the different closures, right? So you have this little panel with a zipper underneath and then buttons on top. This one only buttons. And that one has a zipper and buttons. Is that what that is right there? A zipper, right? Hard to tell really. Oh, and it does have the drawstring with the toggles and snaps or buttons or something else they said. Yep. She's ready, ready for an a um, avalanche? No, what's it called? <laughs> monsoon, ready for a monsoon. Also, I think she has some kind of pocketing up here too, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, raglan sleeve, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, yep, and then your traditional little flap back here. I don't know the function of that really, but all the raincoats have them. Maybe some kind of like wicking situation where the water like flicks off this way and gets less water on the bottom. I don't know. I'm making that up. Okay. So broadcloth, cotton blends, linen blends, moleskin, ripstop nylon. Okay. Interesting. They barely mentioned the waterproofedness of it all at all. 
Huh, okay, well. I don't know that I would make this out of linen. Right? Doesn't that feel weird? This is a raincoat. Like, that's it. But I guess, I don't know, would it be cool to have, I don't know. No, I think it's just a raincoat. I guess maybe some of the other versions that didn't, well, what did, oh, let me see the line drawings again. Yeah, they all have this. Maybe this in a linen with a hood? I don't know. That feels weird, right? Yeah, I think that this is just meant to be made out of rain, water, repellent, protective material. That's really all I would go for. Otherwise, I think it would look like, <laughs> I don't know, he made a raincoat out of non-raincoat fabric. That rain is a beating on my window so loud. Um, okay, back to this. Let's see. So many notions, as you can imagine. Cording, eyelets, barrel stoppers, which are the little, you know, stoppers at the end of your cording. Um, separating zipper, heavy duty snaps or buttons, or an exposed separating zipper with six heavy duty buttons. Wait, they're both exposed, okay. Exposed separating zipper? What, what's a non-exposed zipper? Well, I don't know what that means. Eight to 26 on the size range. Obviously it's very loose fitting. The bust is probably all that matters. And even that is negligible because there's 12 inches of ease in the bust. So again, one of those things where you're looking at the shoulder and that's really it. As long as it fits through the shoulder, you are good to go. So it does not, I mean, I know it's rain pouring down rain here now, but it really doesn't rain here for a prolonged period of time. Not long enough for me to invest in a, yet another raincoat. So this one's a pass for me, but if you live somewhere where it rains a lot, by all means. Okay, here's Mimi's other pattern. Pants, jacket, and shorts. Okay, all white again. Um, jacket with shawl collar features, side self tie and patch pockets. Jacket sits below the waist. Shorts and pants have fly front slash pockets and elastic at back. Okay. I just pulled out one of her patterns from last summer. Remember the shorts with the crop top? These, this, these shorts feel a lot like that. Elastic and all of that kind of stuff. But this is cool. It's like a... It's like a jacket, but with this like little casual tie on the side. I don't know. That feels very fresh. I kind of love that, actually. Why didn't I ever think of that? <laughs> um, I don't know if it's intended to have a drop shoulder, but it, it does on her. This shawl collar with a notch. And then this little baby pocket. And then again with the shorts or pants with elastic at the waist. Yeah, so fun. Let's see more of the shorts. I'm assuming this is some kind of linen on her jacket. Oh, we don't get to see the shorts or the waistband. Um, it's going to thunder really loud. I'm sorry. Uh, linens, cottons, rayon, suiting, denim, and crepe. Yeah, okay. Spring type suiting. Sure. Sure. That makes sense. Denim, it, uh, I might have gone with like a lightweight denim or at least said chambray. I don't know you could rock this in like full on denim denim, but something's lined. So we need some lining fabric and then lightweight fusible. And it does look like the shoulder's a little bit dropped here too. All right. Um, one button, a zipper, and elastic, and hook and bar. What's the hook and bar for? Is just the back, just the back is elasticated? Ha ha, okay. So these are different than her last shorts. This is the difference. These are look like Bermuda shorts from the front and then they have elastic in the back. Cool, okay. Cute, I like this. I like this, I like a short suit. Short suit? Yeah. If it's a pants suit, skirt suit, short suit. I like a short suit. Awesome. Okay, hold on. Let me go back 
to this. We can look at sizing. It comes in sizes 8 to 26. The bust doesn't really matter. I'm imagining just the waist. And even that is a little bit, you know, adjustable with the elastic. But the waist, it looks like it has 10 inches of ease. 12 inches of ease, does that say? Oh, A, just kidding. Okay. So they're not giving the waist of the shorts. They're only giving the hip. Okay. So the hip is two inches of ease. A little bit snug for a pant for me. Um, I like more like a four, five, but that's just me. Okay, cool. That's fun, Mimi. Yeah, and then there's a drop shoulder again, just confirming that that is there. And then you can either put these on or leave these off. It, I'm, it's reminding me of what else closes like this. It's mm, maybe like a robe. Is that what I'm thinking? Like some kind of robe, but this collar is not or like a robe. Maybe that's what it is. Cool. I like that one. Okay, now we have Mrs. Shirt Pants and Shorts. Okay. Short or long sleeve button down shirt and high waisted wide leg pants with cutting line for shorts have pleats, pockets, and fly front opening. Wow, look at these pants. Draped to the high heavens. Are all of those pleats? Oh my word. That's gotta be like 10 pleats per side. That is incredible. These are so cool. And look, oh, this little crop top with it, stop. Okay, I'm obsessed. I want this and this immediately. The top feel, this version feels like, okay, we'll just throw in this longer one. That is where it's at. Boxy cropped shirt like this, love. But look at the drape and like design of these pants. Is that not eight or 10 pleats up here? One, two, three, four, eight. Well, not including this pocket one, so seven. 14, what's in the back? Oh, yes, you are so cool. I wanna be just like you. Oh, pretty. Okay, here's the back. Um, I could do without with whatever this is. But only a dart in the back? Interesting. Let me see that again. Yeah, only a dart in the back. Huh. <laughs> These are so cool. Okay, so linens, a million percent. Chambray, gauze, lightweight cottons, rayons. Yeah, I'm just picturing a linen rayon blend. 100%. Um, lightweight, fusible, and then you need buttons, buttons, and a zipper for the pants. 8 to 26 on the size range. That puts our, let's see, what's the waist? 24 inches to 41 and a half inches. And then... Waist on CD, two inches in the waist. That's perfect. The hip should be pretty roomy. Yeah, I love these. I might make the pants too. Just make it all. So freaking cool. I can't be alone. You guys like these too, right? Like they're not even that funky. They're just interesting. Okay, here is another pant and short. High-waisted fly front pants and shorts have front pleats and pockets. Views A and C have cuffs. Views B and C feature adjustable tabs at waist and front coin pocket. Adjustable tabs? Excuse me? Wow, they really are adjustable. Interesting. D mm. <laughs> It's like, excuse me why I let out my tabs because I ate too much Chick-fil-A today. And this little coin, okay, that's cute. That little coin pocket. 
really cute. Other than that, I don't... Mm, like, if I'm going to make a pair of pants this spring, it's going to be the other ones, not these. But I can, I think that we're two different people. Like if you want to wear these and I want to wear those, like our styles are just probably a little bit different. Although these shorts with the little rolled up cuff are adorable, especially in this like little print. Uh, that could be convincing. So this one has the slant pockets with the flap and no little coin pocket. And no adjustable tabs, for that matter. I don't know why they're making them look so slouchy. Is that to help us visualize something? Why can't they just be straight? Okay, those are adorable. I actually really need those. in some kind of like printed denim, right? Let's take a look at the adjustable tab to see if we can make. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to, you know, adjust it by several inches or anything, but you can definitely get, like, let it out a little bit for some french fries. <laughs> Here's the back. The back looks exceptional. One of the best fitting model, uh, uh, like, what are they called? Um sample combinations I've ever seen. Like they look like they made these for her. You've got the welt pocket with a little button here. You've got what looks like a belt, but I'm assuming that has something to do with the adjustable waist. Which makes me think like, why couldn't we add this belt loop thingy to ready to wear? Hold on. That's got me on thinking a whole new thing. Um, if you're following me, you're following me. If not, let me flush this out. I might have a cool idea for fixing ready-to-wear pants. Okay, so chambray, cotton blends, gauze, linen blends. Yeah, for sure. But you could easily do, you know, denim, chino, all that kind of stuff too. Well, I guess it's cotton blends. Um, lining, which I think is probably just for the pocket bags. Poly, cotton blends, and then some fusible. Zipper, buttons, 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 and then D-rings for the adjustable part. 6 to 24 on the size range. That puts our waist at 23 to 39 inches with one and a half, one to one and a half inches of ease. And the hip has five inches of ease. I like a five inch hip ease personally. Those shorts are adorable. And I, again, love this little thing. And the adjustable, okay. It feels a little immature, but you know, like how you have to do that for like growing children because otherwise you'd be buying them new clothes every month. <laughs> but you know, if you have a fluctuating waistline, you get like um, uh, swollen, you know, like why not? It shouldn't be considered anything different than like having elastic in the back. Okay, now we have another vintage pattern. Okay, this is a vintage jumpsuit. Oh my word. This 1970s vintage top stitched jumpsuit with front zipper has collar at high. Collar at high. Collar at high. No idea. Long set-in sleeves gathered to button cuffs, buttoned pockets, and can be worn with a purchased belt. View A with side pocket has... View A with side pocket has lower pockets with buttoned ends that form belt carriers. What? View A, I don't think those are side pockets. Those are like patch pockets that create this little loop-de-loop. -loop. Is this a zipper? I love this. This is so cool. 
I don't know what they mean by caller at high. I have no idea what that means. That must be a typo. Tell me that's a typo. Yeah, 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 yeah. This in a denim, please. Like I could not be stopped. <laughs> this version particularly with this little loop-de-loop -loop thing. This one does feel very like you could make this out of like a sequin or something and just literally stop the world. Like everything would just stop. Um, this could be really cool in so many different fabrics. And it doesn't have a waist seam. So, oh man, this is cool. Okay. Lightweight wool, wool flannel, tweed. So far it's feeling very full. Gabardine, soft, lightweight, double knit. What? Linen, silk linen, crepe, denim, chino, poplin, canvas, duck. Oh my word. Okay, the possibilities are endless, but they want a mid to heavy weight woven with no stretch. Gotcha. Zipper, seam binding or stretch lace and a purchased belt. No idea what this lace is for. A hem, I guess. Also, eight buttons for A and six buttons for B. I don't know why A and B get different button numbers. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, this one has eight. Oh, maybe three or so up here. No, it's two. One, two, three, four. I don't know. Um, 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 um. Okay, sizing is size eight to 26. Again, really the shoulder is probably all that matters. And of course the length through here, but they do give us bust, waist and hip finished. So we've got four and a half, easy, four and a half inches in the bust, 10, no, eight or so in the waist, and then five in the hip. Okay, cool. Let's look at these line drawings. Oh, but you still have to use a purchased belt, even if you make the belt loops. Huh, okay, seeing it like this, and they also have this little patch pocket here, which they didn't really call out. Oh man, I wonder how weird it would look if you didn't wear a belt, but made it out of a fabric that was not so structured. This might, this might stick, you know, whenever you look at these patterns and you look at, what have we looked at? 10, 15 patterns today. Um, what's the one that's going to stick out in your mind? Like tomorrow when you're not really thinking about it anymore, this might be that. I think this will be in my brain for a minute trying to figure out how to make it not look like this. <laughs> But not necessarily have to make or buy a belt either. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I love the 70s. So no surprise that I love that. And then finally, we've got a little piece of lingerie. Yeah, so this is Madeline Intimates. Um, not pictured. She used to, didn't she used to model for her own stuff? I can't remember. But um She's an indie pattern designer and then also does, kind of like Mimi, kind of does both. Um, but this is a pullover, full slip with empire waistline and lace trim, have cap length flared skirt or above knee length straight skirt. Pull on above knee half slip, has wide elastic waistline casing and lace trim. See envelope for more information. Okay. So it's this slip with this like empire waist seam, I guess, and either an A-line or pencil. And then this really big um, lace trim detail, which is fun. And then you also have the lace trim on the skirt with the really wide elastic. I'm not sure about this because if this is truly a slip that you wear underneath things, I don't know that you want that much bulk there. I mean, that sure does look comfortable. I mean, the fabric's not my favorite, but. And 
I'm sure that she sells this pattern. This is not included though. Yeah, really sweet. I actually just sewed a knit, like little camisole thing yesterday. Charmeuse, Crepe de Chine, Silky Types, Trico, and then a lot of lace. Lace, lace, and elastic in here somewhere. Here's elastic. Extra small to 1X. Oh, no. Extra small to 5X. I know that she's size inclusive, um, so it goes up to 5X, which is equivalent to a 4 to 38, which is a bust of 42 to 60. Am I reading that right? No, not 42 to 60. 29 and a half to 60. Yeah. Sweet. Easy to sew? Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Let me look at the line drawings really quickly. Yeah, just a little dart some seaming for sure. Again, this is the only thing that I'm a little bit like, mm, that's a questionable choice simply because the elastic that that is that wide is usually pretty thick. And I don't know if that would be super comfortable, but you could always, you know, adjust that. Well, well, that is going to do it kids. That is all for simplicity early spring. Looks like we had, oh wait, is there another page? Oh Lord, hold on, that might not be it. Okay, kids stuff. Kids, 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 kids. And accessories and dolls. Yeah, they have a bunch of stuff. Sometimes there's pet stuff in here too, which is fun. Casserole dishes, costumes. So yeah, all of this stuff is the stuff we do not cover in First Impression Friday because I mean, what's there to say? Like the kid stuff is always cute. <laughs> and what can I really say about like a doll swaddle? <laughs> um, so yeah, there we go. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So with that said, what do we think of the 20 or so new patterns from Simplicity? I'm actually quite happy with the selection we have here. It feels like familiar, but new and different at the same time, I guess. I'd love to know your thoughts. Which of these patterns are you going to be grabbing? Which are you going to be thinking about tomorrow? Like what's going to be stuck in your mind? What do you have to have? Leave it in the comment section below and I will see you all very soon. Bye.